You see? Are they creep? If there's a way you could put them around your house. As we go to work and as we exercise. This good exercise. Early morning exercise. Let's go. Sugarcane plantation over here. Now the type of music we call it black bamba bike. Hirojet. This was the preserve for the rich some 20 years back not even 25 five years back it's a very good exercise for your thighs and hands but I just keep on stretching. Open your lungs, your chest. Breathing is good. You see a fellow biker there. Can I do a dance? <laughs> I was just asking that kid what's the name for the doggy? It's terrible. I want to ride like. We use hand signals when we want to turn off. In this case, nobody following me, nobody in front. I didn't use a hand signal, one hand was filming. But when you, what you know, when you are riding, uh, okay, there are some guys that have improvised their bicycles, they have lights. Mine is just that plain. So we use hand signals when you want to turn left or right you stretch 
your arm straight in the direction that you want to turn. Kids in school. So on bicycles, we use hand signals. Even on motorbikes at times. <laughs> Times you just whistle when somebody's in front. If you don't have a bell, you whistle. Yep, that's what we do when you are using a motor, uh, a bicycle that is old school, like mine, and I don't have safety gear. I have floaters this is one of the village I meant to say village vocational training schools equips the kids here with the skills in farming and other functional skills it's deep in the village it's called Kabras smart farm so kids come to train matters to do with agriculture has some very units and they plant hay so let's go This is a turning point. So we go slow, going that way. One funny thing is that I don't have a, <laughs> a gadget to estimate the number of kilometers or meters that I have done, but usually estimate roughly we know. So I don't have a gadget like to check what I've done. Yeah, so this is the main road from the other main road behind me. This is just a Kafida road. I've just come from the Kafida road like to the main Maram road. So what I was saying is that I don't have like, you know when you are walking, and then you have a gadget, a digital gadget that tells you how many steps you have done, how many kilometers you have done. I don't have. Show you again there. But it's not a long distance. It's like from my start point to the finish point and then back. In total, it could be around 10 kilometers. And my queue, it's uh, not on a Maram, not on a tarmac road. But on the Maram Road, this kind of all weather road. So I think it's five kilometers to five kilometers back. And my chain just left the free wheel. So I need to fix it. Saying when I say my chain left the free wheel, this behind here it's the free wheel. So for you to return it back, you have to let it leave the other front side and then return it. The goodness is when you're accessing the bike, it's easier to handle. So just return that way. That way, 
the mode of transport we use here. I've seen the bike. So I'm gonna go back on my iron horse and continue with my exercise. <laughs> that car wheel behind me is called a free wheel. It can go either in front or back when it has a chain. But they, when it, at that time it locks. When it has a chain, now it locks. So it pushes the other, the front, serrated the wheel. Huh? The black horse is um, somehow faulty, so I will go and realign it. We call it wheel balancing also. That's the thing. It's not wheel balancing, just aligning the free wheel. Plus the other. The one that has the chain huh, on it. Yeah. I'm talking about this one here. Where the pedals are. Where the pedals are, I need to align it. This is the corrugated. So when you're in a bumpy ride, the chain falls off. So I need to align it. But all the same, you're good to go. I feel like I dropped something, but uh, I don't have anything in my pocket. Yeah, it's just sitting in the back, you just have your phone. Yeah. Of late, the mode of transport is motorbikes. Motorbikes took over from their bicycles. But whatever we were using initially, walking on foot, my grandmother's place is on this side. It's around. Uh, some 10 kilometers. So we used to walk on foot as we go visiting. This is a market day. So this is, they are taking their cows, livestock and poultry to the market. Market day is on the other side where I'm just coming back from. So I was saying, uh, initially we used to walk this road on foot, going to visit our grandmother. You can imagine the the distance that I've, I've been riding and the video by the way it's not full I've been cleaving off some sections as I continue over maybe as I put the phone in the pocket but we used to walk on foot there is that kiddo is walking it's from the shop the other side so we used to walk this distance that is in the 80s, early 90s. There were bicycles here, but very few. Very few bicycles. Now I'm just turning off to the next entrance. But since the phone is in my hand, I cannot show hand signal. I just slow down and turn to this side. Yeah. That is the rural setup. That's how we grew here. Some sugar again. I have arrived at my destination. I just want to check some sugar cane. We released a farm here and planted. The farm we released here. So I want to check how they are faring on. Here. Yeah. It's around. So this is the farm that I want to see how the progress is going on. But as I come, I also do what? Exercise. And that is how we pack. You see? 
air hose. Ah, here I am. Let's go check the farm. The problem is eh, that uh, it has been raining a lot. I was saying it has been raining a lot, so the can has been overgrown by weeds. You see, that's the problem we have. When it rains are a blazing, yes, but when they come, a lot of it. So this whole farm has weeds. So they have weeding from the other end. So I had wanted to spray, but I realized I'll use a lot of herbicide as uh, unlike when they weed. I'd have used a lot of herbicide which will have been more costly than if guys just came in and weeded. So I decided to just, we decided to plow actually, not to weed. We call this Tithonia, Tithonia. It's a very good fertilizer. Some people. <laughs> Uh, so I've left them to do their work. Let me go back home. Now the problem is that I'll be going uphill. We shall have some very beautiful wild flowers. Eh? See that flower? I don't know if you're seeing the shades. Very wild, beautiful flowers. So I'll them to do the work. I go back. Now, I don't know if I'll be able to film going uphill. Now, this is the tedious stretch of exercising because I'm going back uphill to the other side. I don't know if I'll be able to hold my, my phone in my hand <laughs> because you know, when you're going uphill, it means you're cycling all through. So you need that extra strength, both hands to hold. Because if you cycle with one hand uphill, I don't know if I'll manage going back. You see, these are flowers I'm saying. Wild flowers, but looking beautiful. You see, I don't know how we call it. They creep. Very beautiful. I see that flower. Let me pluck it and show you. Oh. Very beautiful. Let me take a screenshot of it. Oh, beautiful flowers. Hey. See, these flowers are beautiful. I wish they there's a way you could plant. I wish there was a way you can plant them in your compound. So this is the can, but the weeds have overgrown. You see? Are they creep? If there's a way you could put them around your house. These type of weeds are usually poisonous to the animals. I don't know if you know them. Most of the weeds are usually poisonous and uh, have a bitter taste. Some so cows cannot even eat, like this one. But this one in Africa here, we use it traditionally as medicine. It has some very awful smell, very pungent smell. We use it as a, a fruit. Ah. If you get the roots of this particular plant, eh, then you, you wash <coughs> and you boil the roots. It, used, it was used for stomach ailments. This is your normal blackjack. Those are the kind of weeds that uh, thrive in Africa here. Uh, that's me in the shed, taking my iron house. Now this is the real exercise, going uphill. Eh? It's the most toughest. Most if you have a black mamba bicycle. The one that you cannot adjust your chains. Do you know the way those racing cycling bikes, there you can adjust the chain such that when you are cycling uphill, it becomes lighter. This is how you can adjust. Eh? Something like gears. 
So you can adjust over here behind the hub. This is how you can adjust and it becomes lighter. Unlike this iron horse black mamba of mine. So going uphill now. It means I'll have to cycle the entire journey of around five kilometers. Because when you're going uphill, you cannot free wheel. Eh? When I say feeling, I mean uh, you, that moment that you are, you are, you are not cycling. Eh? That's what we call free wheeling. But this, you have to cycle throughout. So it means I'll have to, yeah, I'll have to put it back in the pocket and uh, use the other hand to cycle, to hold on the handlebars. These are article bars where I'm holding here. These are handlebars. It's a very good exercise, by the way. <coughs> Opens up your chest, lungs. But the good thing is that you exercise from your legs downwards. Last stretch. I can't ride. My chain just fell off again. There's another bike that has just crossed me there. That's the mode of transport going to the market to sell chicken. My chain is faulty. And there are no food, there are no guys that mend bicycles here. So I'm back, but because of the chain, I am on slow mode. Yes, I am on slow mode now. I can't ride more. I can't ride faster. So I'm going back. Remember us passing here? I am on slow mode. All the same, I'm almost. So the chain fell off the freewheel again. Going back slowly. Ah, that's me. Coming back from the sites. I'm coming back from there. We are back at that vocational training college I was telling you. You see, bikers. We call them, there's another bike coming the other side. Eh? Black Mambas. This is the college. What the government did, uh, sorry, I didn't even say where this is coming from. It's East Africa, Kenya to be specific, on the western sides. Of Kenya. So what the government did of late, ever since devolution, we used to be a one-party state some years back. But ever since devolution, there's a way the government uh, wants to empower its people, uh, equipping them with skills. So this, that's a hay, hay banner. So whatever the government is doing is equipping them with the skills they they came up with uh, vocational training centers deep down in the villages so that we don't have so that people don't have that excuse of colleges are far or vocational training institutes are only in urban centers so like the one i've just shown you behind there uh they usually take people, students actually, not just young ones, even uh, adults, they can go train for around six months, not six months actually, a year, two years, it's actually diploma and certificate courses, they equip them, they get equipped with skills in uh, 
plumbing, animal husbandry, uh, interior design, masonry, and the likes. The hands-on courses, such that when you leave the, the, those vocational inst institutes, you are equipped with that skill that will earn you a living later in life. That's where I'm coming from. So, there are several in the villages of Kenya. And the main cash crop here, sugarcane. I'm just coming. Oh, it fell again. It fell again. You see, I need to align. This is the place I was telling you I need to align. This is called a free wheel. So I need to, you see this thing here, to tighten it so that this wheel doesn't move side to side for the chain to fall off. I'll just return it. It happens. I returned it. Eh? But I need to align it. are going to school. Today is Saturday, 3rd of February. The year is 2024. Exercise mode. At least this stretch I can go without much effort. But it was an exercise. Good one. Here goes the bike. Donuts. That guy uh, supplies donuts to various mini shops in the village. Kids are going back to school. How are you? Just look behind, nothing. So I turn from here. I turn from here. Wow, it fell again. We are on our last mile. Last mile. Almost reaching the main tarmac road. Now inside, where are coming from? The Amaram Road or this kind of roads. Now, like uh, half a kilometer. Just near here, there is a tarmac road. I'm sweating. My whole back is wet. With sweat. Sweat wet. like three days ago welcome to rural Africa it's nice land here see it some cows graze here the owner has some good dairy animals
sugar cane all over. Sugar cane, sugar cane. We have within in this region, we have around uh, two sugar factories in a radius of five kilometers. Is it five or ten? Around ten kilometers. Two sugar factories competing each other. One is called Cabras Sugar and the other one is called Butali Sugar. That is in Kenya, East Africa. So the major crop in Western Kenya is maize and sugar cane. The one that you are seeing here. Maize and sugar cane. Main cash crop in Western Kenya. Kakamega Mumias. Bungoma and Webuye. Another fact is that these major factories, all of them in Kenya, are situated in western part of Nyanza. When I say western part, it means Kakamega, Usia, Bungoma, Mumias. Nyanza is South Nyanza, Sony Sugar in, in uh, Awendo. Then Chemelil, those other sides. So, this is the sugar belt of Kenya, western part of the country, as we go towards the lake region. Guys are plowing there with the bulls. The main road is just there. Hope you've seen it. Is a Saturday a weekend, so kids are going for remedial lessons. The main road is here, so I'm done with my exercise. Back, shower, go back to my mini shop. That's a school bus over there. Back to the main road, there's a bike there. Wow. So I want to go on the main road because I'm reaching home. Home is just there where the bus is. So that route goes towards Kakamega. And this other one goes to Yabu. I'm home now. Back. <sighs> we are back. We are from that side. Is the main road. Yeah, back to the office now. <laughs> after after the bike exercise riding, we are back to the office. We're gonna have some papaya. Yeah, to revitalize. We are back.